So you missed last week. I did. I'm very sorry. I had to be at my new job mm. an hour away at 9 a.m. on Tuesday. So that meant getting up really early and I was nervous. And so I, I went to bed at like 10 o'clock, I think. Some absurd early hour. Well, I wasn't here, but Space Guy was. And he, he was sad. I know. I saw a little bit. He was sad you didn't show up, you know? Oh, I'm very sorry. He was stuck with Lewis, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Well, I'm sure they got yeah. along famously. Yeah, yeah, sort of. Um, so, yeah, we have, of course, wonderful, awful, horrible thing. I, I don't know that why I say that, because they're not wonderful things. They're, they're the opposite. Some of, them, some of them are wonderful. I guess in the strictest sense of the, of the definition of wonder, yes. Um, Uh, and of course, we're going to have some follow up to April Fool's because there's always follow up to April. Yeah. Fools. All right, let's get this going. Each week, Catherine goes on the World Wide Web, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings them back to us here for a little segment we like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? Crazy. And um. Yeah, it, this, uh, okay, um, I don't even know how to begin approaching this. I, I must do it delicately, I suppose. Um, Blue Waffle, does this mean anything at all? Wow, you missed this one too. Feel lucky. Um, of course, our, our, our audience there, I just said the words Blue Waffle, and you see the entire channel is losing its shit. There's a reason for that. Um, oh, April Fools, you so crazy. Trenton Councilwoman falls prey to Blue Waffle hoax. It's more contagious than HIV AIDS, a sweeping epidemic with the power to turn women's genitals blue. Blue Waffle disease deserves the city's attention, Councilwoman Kath McBride said at a city council meeting last night. During the council member comment period on the meeting, McBride said she received a concern call from a city man asking what Trenton was doing to combat, quote, blue waffle disease and said she hoped Health and Human Services Director John Brownlee could provide her with more information on this mysterious disease she had never heard of. Blue waffle disease is considered an ur internet urban legend, a fake sexually transmitted disease said to tint women's genitals blue. A graphic image of women supposedly infected with the disease has circulated on several websites. Okay. This is an urban legend I've never heard. Yeah, it's it. it don't Google it. Love of God, don't Google it. You, 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 okay. you, 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 you'll thank me. Okay. Ask yeah, you ask anyone, you know, who is at least the little tiniest bit Internet savvy about it, and they'll go, oh, in, in the bad way. Yeah, everyone, even the channel, even my awful channel is saying, don't Google it. Oh, don't act like they're stout. Every week we reduce them to tears. They're a bunch of paintings. <laughs> OK, so you're a city council person. I would think if I'm going to bring up an issue. That I know nothing about in front of my peers and fellow council people. You would Google it. Yeah, as you'd be sorry in this case, but I wouldn't rely on one phone call from one guy on April 1st. No, no. No, you should do some research on that. I mean, it's just, you know, you're an elected official. We kind of expect no, no, no. Well, we don't expect shit out of you. But this is, is it? What, since when does elected officials sort of become like the special class for adults? Since the Tea Party started getting elected, yeah. thanks. Yeah. <laughs> it really is, though. I mean, you, you look at the uh, at at um, like the the people who said, "Oh, uh, in North Carolina, that that they tried to legislate the erosion of the sea. They said it can't erode for this, you know." Yeah, it's yeah. It's like you remember the adventures of Pete and Pete? Yes. 
the end of every summer, Arnie, the strongest man in the world, would try and beat up this ocean. Uh, you can't beat up the ocean. It'll always win. Unless you're Poseidon. I miss that show. And you're probably not Poseidon or Percy Jackson. Okay. Um, how old's your car, Sarah? I drive a 2002 Buick. I drive a 96 Windstar. Mm. So it's kind of at the... I don't know how, how well yours is doing after 10 years. Is it to the uh, spit and duct Weirdly, tape level? I drive like the anomaly, like the 2002 Buick LeSabre is like indestructo car. I have had this conversation with several people who have one of these. Whatever it is about this model when it came off the line, this car will run for fucking ever. Like you change the oil regularly. You take care of her. That car is fucking magic. My car is pretty fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it's like a yacht. It's an enormous car, so it's a little hard to park, but but it runs pretty good. Well, see, me, I was having issues with mine, and I was actually looking to buy one, and it was just so intimidating, all the stuff. So, you know, I was trying to find the best deal I could to buy a car. I just, I didn't go as far as, uh, as this lady. Um... Woman allegedly performed sex act at BP station... To get a better car deal. Sullivan County, Tennessee. A woman and man were arrested Wednesday morning after the sheriff's office received calls about indecent exposure at a BP gas station. The woman told police she performed a sex act in exchange for a better car deal. An officer spotted the vehicle in question, a gray Cadillac. Uh, the passenger, 28-year-old Crystal Franson, told police she performed oral sex on Gary Tipton, 58, in the parking lot. She added that she did an exchange for a better deal on the Cadillac she wanted to buy from Tipton. Branson was charged for prostitution. Tipton faces patronizing of prostitution. Officers also found several volumes in his pocket and chose him with possession of Schedule 3 drugs. It was discovered he did not have a prescription for the pills. Two things. Hmm. One, kind of has a John Locke look about him. Does. He kind of, yeah, that, that, that's a little creepy. I got, we got, he's big screen. Let's get him on the, yeah. Don't tell me what I can't do. Yeah, of course, in this instance, that's that's a little, yeah. Sometimes uh, they're going to tell you what you can't do, John. And what you can't do is get a blowjob at the BP. Second, was this transaction happening? Why was this actually at a gas station? I know, right? Presumably the car she was looking to buy from him was like probably at his home. Blow him there. <laughs> like, at the point where you're given blowjobs for car deals, <laughs> you don't really get to be like, okay, but we're meeting in a public place for my safety. As soon as you're putting a guy's dick in your mouth for money... Safety is no longer really, obviously, your priority. And, uh, well, another thing, a Cadillac, really, in this economy? Well, I, it was obviously used. I know, I could, yeah, I could see, I could see a BJ for a Prius, but a Cadillac? The gas prices on that, that thing must be awful. Mm. Spending like $100 a tank. Now, Prius, I could get, but a Cadillac? Come on. Isn't that how Jack the Ripper killed women? Didn't he, like, choke them on his dick? No. Also, Will Jr. says, show me the car fucks. There was, no, there's some serial killer that, like, killed a bunch of prostitutes by choking them with his dick. I think it's Jack the Ripper. I think you're still asleep. No, I'm serious. No, I'm not thinking of a Serbian film. This is a thing that actually happened in history. I know it was. In fact, I just... the Ripper stabbed people. All right, well, it was someone else then. Not his dick. <laughs> now it's going to annoy me who that was. I'm going to have to find that. Okay. It's not a movie, you guys. I'm talking about a real person. <sighs> uh, anyway. All right, let's see. Um... We have another one from Australia. So we, you know what? We can't make any more damage with that country. 
than we already have. Um, the, yeah, you, you, we all have we, we keep making the hold my beer joke. Hold my beer is supposed to prelude incredible stupidity. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, this is kind of a little bit of a twist on that one. Naked man risk croc death for booze. Fisherman risked his life for what he considered a good cause, a bet. He won two cases. Well, this is Australia. You risk some kind of wildlife death just walking out to get your mail. He won two cases of Jack Daniels for jumping on the log, racing down a flooded crocodile infested river in the nude. Tiller rode the makeshift raft for about three minutes before clambering back onto a boat. I enjoyed a few beers, and it seemed like a good idea at the time. Famous fucking last words. We weren't catching any fish because the river was flowing too fast, so I thought, why not? Lots of reasons! Two cases of Jack Daniels, though. No. bad. Yeah, but naked... And crocodiles. These are two things that should never go together. You know, if you're going to get eaten by a crocodile, you might as well be naked. (laughs) All that clothing is just giving it more shit to grip onto. And it's going to eat you anyway. Why give them heartburn? If you're going to feed yourself to a wild animal, you might as well be naked and not give the poor thing indigestion. (laughs) Just be considerate. Just and the picture, you you don't see all that much, but what you do see, woo, yeah, yeah, that's that guy. And there's another picture. Yeah, we're not going to do the other picture. <laughs> no, thank you. I like to keep the show running, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, that that guy. Oh my! I just why in the this 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 just look at the, his dignity. It's gone. It, it's evaporated into the ether as though it never existed. All for booze. You know what? I would if I really wanted booze. All for a lot of free booze. If I wanted booze that badly, I'd go on the Internet and figure out how to make the shit before I would get on the fucking log over the fucking crocodiles. Besides, it's Jack Daniels, for Christ's sakes. It's not like top shelf shit here. I feel like the kind of people you could convince to surf naked in crocodile infested waters aren't going to be enticed by top shelf shit. Well, I personally, I'm going to hold out for single malt uh, aged whiskey. Good to know. Yeah, you you hold out for the good shit. If you're going to, you know, risk your penis among co- crocodiles, you hold out for the good shit. That's that's a pro I tip. just not risk my penis on crocodiles, but that's me. <sighs> just have this weird image of you beating a crocodile to death with a dildo. <laughs> I can't talk about that. Those records are sealed. Uh I didn't know they were endangered when I did that, okay? Um. Speaking of how fucked up the economy is, we were talking about that earlier. Um. All the channel cares about right now is whether or not I have a dick. Our demographic. Charming, no? Um. So, yeah, I, I... I had I got laid off from a job recently. I'm looking to get another one very soon. And in the process, I'm very, very protective of a, of a job I get. I understand they're not exactly falling out of the sky. You have one you hold on for dear life unless, you know, it's you know horrible fucking job. But I could see waiting tables, you know, be fine. But um, I'm not going to go up and start shit with the manager. And I certainly ain't going to do this. Former Chili's employee threatens manager. Man was fired after bringing a dead bird, a dead bird to work and claiming it was his mother. 
Be kind to your web-footed friends. Cause what? a duck could be somebody's mother. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hinesville Chili's manager told police that a former employee threatened her life in the uh, restaurant parking lot March 29th. Um, police responded about 3 p.m. the day uh, the call uh, the Chili's restaurant at Oglethorpe Highway. According to the report, a manager at the restaurant told responding officers that a former employee had approached her in the parking lot and told her she had, quote, better watched her back and she, that he was going to, quote, going to fucking kill her. A shift leader told police that he witnessed the inter- incident. Uh, so the man told was uh, arrived to pick up his check. He was given his check and told to leave the premises. The man then began saying things that, quote, the people were saying about him were not true. Um, manager told police suspect had been fired around March 15th for bringing a dead bird to work and informing everyone the dead bird was his mother. Uh, okay. Y- you know, I, I mean, is he like someone who really believes in reincarnation? Uh and is a bird up or down on the re- reincarnation scale? I feel like it'd be up because yeah. birds have pretty decent existences, right? Like yeah. they get to fly. They get to poop on people's heads. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they don't pay taxes. Oh, oh, hybrid two in the channel gets very esoteric here. The grandson of Tesla. You're going to have to Google that shit. <laughs> His mother was a real fitch. Oh, and that's one way to flip the bird at your boss. Come on, guys. Really? Well, he'll never be the head of a major corporation. I just if you have reached the point, you're taking dead wildlife into your place of work. Unless you're a taxidermist. Which apparently there's a competitive Mike informed me that now there's like an apparently a competitive taxidermy reality show yes yes there none is. of those words belong together no, as they far don't. as it's- no they don't that's that's just but I, and I, i'm just wondering and that's a food service place man yes like, you can't just bring fucking dead animals into a restaurant like that's not sanitary yeah Remember we had a story a while back. I don't think you were here, but I had a story a while back about a Chinese restaurant that was bringing in like dead animals, like roadkill. Yeah, no, I was here for that story. Yeah. It was awesome. You don't do that shit. Uh -uh. Can you imagine being in the Chili's and seeing some dude walk in with like a dead pigeon and you're like, I think I'm done with my buffalo wings. Thanks. And this is one of those... Do you realize your crazy moment? You're standing there with a dead bird in hand. What? Maybe he wanted to do like the Monty Python dead parrot routine. <laughs> Place in a time. <laughs> Place. In well, a time. yes. OK, um, we got some more wildlife here, and I don't th- this is definitely a what the fuck is wrong with you, but you got to wait to get to it. This one definitely involves nature and. Wow, I'm just reading about this story and it's scaring the shit out of me and it's even, it's on another continent and it's scaring the shit out of me. Bears in Russia are addicted to jet fuel, sniff it to get high and pass out. Brown bears in Russia's Far East have developed the habit of sniffing discarded barrels formerly filled with aviation fuel until they pass out. Containers left in the Kronsky Nature Reserve and the nearby creatures pick up on the strong smell of gasoline and kerosene. The animals love this smell so much they begin deeply inhaling the fumes for a few for minutes at a time before digging shallow holes for themselves to lie in once they've achieved their desired state. Bears suspect to be the largest brown bears in the world, weighing 1,200 pounds. Uh, photos taken by Igor Chapotlik, 52. And yeah, let's, let's show you some more pictures of these bears. Oh my God, that last picture. Yeah, yeah, that's... 
that, 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 yeah, the bear, I see the bear steal in the barrel, the bear staking out his claim, and of course, the bear passed out from sniffing. Why is jet fuel being discarded on a nature preserve? Uh, fuel is used to power generators and helicopters used by nature preserve workers. Okay, that makes sense. But jet fuel nature preserve. These aren't those aren't two great tastes that taste great together. Those phrases shouldn't mix. Well, here's the big problem. Here's what this is. Here's the, the OK. So let's say you're right and they stop doing this. And they get all the, the jet fuel out of the nature reserve. You're going to have an angry bear riot. Exactly. You're, You're going to have a bunch of junky bears in withdrawal. This has been Vladimir Putin's plan all along. <laughs> that guy is reality's actual Bond villain. Like, he has pet tigers. He does judo. Like, he's a Bond villain walking around. This has been his plan all along. An army of angry fucking bears. That's how he's going to take over the world. We are so fucked. Man, I've seen a 300 pound guy with the DTs. The idea of a 1200 pound guy with the DTs. With claws. Yes. And teeth. And I saw know, something else. That, there's this Russian scientist who's basically looking to make the X-Files episode Kill Switch come true. He says that by like 2024, 2054, Humans will be obsolete that he'll have made us immortal because we'll be able to upload our conscious consciousness. Mm hmm. This is Russia, too. Like, this is what's happening in Russia right now, you guys. <laughs> On the one hand, they got like, we're going to upload our brains. And the other, they're getting like bears. Are Cyborgs and junkie bears. This is what's coming out of Russia these days. Please, new world. Uh, and finally... Just some good old fashioned down home crazy. Vandal smeared feces on Department of Public Safety's office wall. This comes from Austin, Texas. Um, man who officials say broke into and vandalized the Department of Public Safety's driver's license office uh, caused severe damage to the walls as well as department vehicles and smeared feces on the wall of the lobby. Kenneth James Van Lu, 40 was arrested and charged with criminal mischief and burglary of a building after he approached troopers. He was barefooted and wearing a driver's license office collared shirt with the department logo. Um, they found several items destroyed inside the office and the word surcharge written in feces on the lobby of the wall. Troopers also found two department vehicles severely damaged with a sharp tool and two trash cans were used to damage the vehicles, hoods and trunks. Damaged vehicles estimated $9,000. Offices has been closed since Wednesday. The officials do not know when it might reopen. The government charges a lot of fees. Not, nobody's happy about this. No. But you do not protest fees with feces. Oh. Let lodge a complaint. Vote your people out of office. Don't spread your poo on the walls. That's only going to cost you more money yeah. in medical bills. Well, not only that, th these days, we DNA taste test everything. Do you know there's a service that will DNA test dog poop in a, in a, a community, a, a, you know, a, a community like that? And they'll test out and they keep track of all your dog's DNA. And if you don't pick up the dog poop and they find it, they will trace it back to your dog. I'm not kidding. This is a real fucking thing. Wow. So they DNA test everything these days. So I would think just smearing DNA. You generally just hosing down a crime scene with your DNA. Mm -hmm. Not the best way to evade capture. Yeah, we think C we think about CSI where they do all this stuff to get like a single hair from the carpet, you know, they find yeah, they're the not going to need Mark Helgenberger to run over that mm -mm. with like her, her science kit. Mm -mm. Nope. Well, actually, they, they will. <laughs> but. 
Haven't we covered poop is not a plan before? Many times. And yet it keeps happening. I... I don't really, we don't really have a story for this one. We just have sadness. This was sent to us. Um, Terrace just sent it to me right now, so this is a surprise final entry, I guess. Ace, Ace wanted me to send it to you. Yeah, I, I, I have no, no other comment here to add, but, um, but this. Dogs wearing pantyhose. Owners put tights on their canines in China. What? Cats would never put up with that crap. <sighs> you try and put pantyhose on a cat, you will die. <laughs> what? When the? <laughs> oh God, the husky! <laughs> that poor husky! What are you doing? Oh God, it just. It just doesn't. Oh, my God. Why would you do that? How does something like this start is my question. A dare, I would assume. People are like, oh, it's offensive. It's animal cruelty. I don't know. I mean, is it cruel? Those dogs don't look particularly upset. Well, dogs don't care. They don't know what's going on. Like, I don't feel like it's cruel as long as they don't make them keep them on all the time. Like, I feel like the dogs are just like, all right, human, whatever. You're going to give me a treat? Great. It just it, But I don't see the point. Well, to put on the other side of the scale in China right now, um, just recently, like a few weeks ago, um, 7,000 dead pigs washed down the river into Shanghai. And no, Singapore. And no, Singapore. Singapore is in Malaysia. Not uh, Shanghai. Yeah, Shanghai. But yeah, 7,000 dead pigs washed down the river. Do they know why? No! They don't! <laughs> just suddenly, dead pigs! Yeah, but stuff like that happens. Like, every now and then, it'll just fucking rain dead birds in places. Yeah, but... Like, you, you, wait, how did 7,000 pigs get in the water? So yeah, this is kind of China right now. It's 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 a little of a. Uh, on one side, you have a flood, you have a, a like an Egyptian plague of dead pigs, and on the other hand, you have the, they they're putting their dogs in pantyhose. Um. So what did we learn this week? Wow. Um. um. <laughs> well, we learned that if you're going to bring something before. A government body, Google it first, even though yeah. it might hurt you. And once again, you at home, don't Google Blue Waffle. Don't. Do not do I it. Feel like, I feel like that's just a like horrible day's promotion waiting to happen. Yes, because I, I, what was that Gandalf Gobbler special they had? Yeah, like they're going to try and do something to promote the new Smurfs movie and it's all going to go sideways. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, um, next we learn that. Look, the bears are getting high. The bears are getting high. Yes. Even if you're not interested in preserving nature. So you're cool with dropping big, you know, drums of jet fuel on the nature preserve. The bears are fucking getting high. Hey, boo boo. No, that's not what you want. There's no way that's going to end well for anyone. Oh, uh, Will Jr. God bless you. Picnic baskets are a gateway drug. <laughs> God bless you, sir. Um. Yeah, if anything ever burns down over there, it's because Smokey is fucking tripping off his ass. Um, Only you can bring me my jet fuel, bitch! Oh, <laughs> uh, we learned that if you're gonna compromise yourself for a car, fuel economy is all I'm saying. You know? Yes. Don't give a BJ less for, than a, you know, a late model Honda. I would think. 
if you're giving out BJ's for a Honda, you have really low self-esteem. Like, I feel like that was a, like, if you're going to, if you're going to give out a blue job, it should be a Cadillac. It should be a really good, expensive car. I'm sorry. I don't like spending a hundred dollars when I fill up my car. Fuel economy. I'm sorry. I think a blow job is worth more than a fucking matrix. Point. You got to have self-esteem in this life. You got to love yourself or no one else will love you. We've learned that apparently uh, going down a river naked full of crocodiles for two cases of 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 Jim Beam. Was it Jim Beam? Yeah, it was Jim Beam. It was Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels. Two, two, two cases of Jack Daniels. It's apparently considered sensible in many parts of the world. Well, at least one part of the world. Yeah, the part of the world that, that has an issue with us, because every time we bring up Australia, we just keep... I mean, he survived, right? Well, if he did, you know why? Because if he didn't, I wouldn't be doing the story. Right, but I'm saying, obviously, he knew what he was doing. He's a professional. I'm sorry, anything that that combines my dick in that close of proximity to a prehistoric fucking lizard. Well, yeah, I'm not saying I would do it. But I mean, we used to do that Circus of the Stars thing where we let random celebrities walk a tightrope for our amusement. Well, yeah, but those are celebrities. They're not like actual people. Well. The kind of people willing to surf a river of crocodiles now, naked for Jack Daniels. I'll tell you what. I, a different breed. If that had been Sammy Hagar, I would have been like, OK, cool. You know, I would have been. No problem. Um, let's see. <laughs> we learned that dead animals are not your relatives. Well, they might be. You don't know that for sure. Well, maybe just, when, when it was still alive, maybe. Just don't bring them to work. Uh like, believe what you're going to believe. I respect your life choice. <laughs> but don't bring them to work. Keep your dead animals at home. The fact we actually have to say that. And once again. Poop doesn't solve anything. I, I don't well, I, I don't think. Well, maybe fertilizer. Solves constipation. Okay. But there's not much use for it. Yeah. To other people. Yeah. It just it, it's not a good it's not a good means of protest, because at that point, if you're if your medium is feces, you've lost your audience immediately. Also, if you're if, if he really was angry about surcharges, the legal fees are going to cost you more. And the cost for smashing up the cars. Like you're just. You've only cost yourself more money. What, like a, a, a $25 surcharge versus thousands of dollars getting your poop off the wall? And getting a lawyer to try and keep you out of jail. Yeah, you don't want that one to go in front of a jury because they hear you smeared poop on the wall. You're done. No. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm still worried about the bears. Yeah, I think that's the big takeaway this week is the bears are high. Yes. And when the jet fuel runs out. This shit, that's that's like a like a like a B movie from the 80s horror film bears. You know, yes. Or like one of those sci fi movies where yeah. they're made, like like the jet fuel gives them superpowers and makes them huge and extra strong. And it's like Russian bear apocalypse. Stop, stop. Because right now someone is writing that and they're stealing our credit. <laughs> Russian bear apocalypse tonight on sci fi starring Yakov Smirnov. 